This is Martin. I cannot pronounce the surname. Skula? Skudla. Okay, and he's going to talk about uh, the sequel and Kefi and for people to write the OK? Okay, so um, with the previous presentation, we actually see the um, kind of code. This will be very practical. Um, I'm the guy behind the plugin, so I know the implementation details, but the purpose of this presentation will be actually to show you how you can effectively visualize non school data. In this particular case, it's graph database, and especially it's known uh, now for J. Um, so we will be doing a lot of stuff directly in Gephi, and not spend much time with theory or any kind of you know, terms. Okay, just in case that uh, somebody is not really familiar with the project, so Gephi is a very cool actually stuff. It's an award winning and open source visualization platform. It's, oh, it's not very visible. Uh, but you can get it at gephi.org. It's written in Java, so it's multi, multi platform. Um, it was not really created to visualize, um, or actually, it is very efficient for graph uh, visualizing. But um, it has didn't have support uh, a few years ago for any kind of graph database. That's what I added as part of the Google Summer of Code program. And Neo4j, there already were some presentations, so it's an OSQL graph database. Um, I'll be sitting for most of the time, sorry for that, because I have to be precise with my mouse. And we directly jump into it. Um, this is kind of very small resolution, I'm sorry for that. Um, so the first thing you need to do obviously has to have installed Gephi and plugin. If you would like to do that, you will just go to tools plugins. It's already um, I have already installed it, so there will be a Neo4j graph database. Now we have an integration in the UI. So the, if you would like to uh, load actually any kind of Neo4j graph database, you will go to file Neo4j database and there are, what you can actually see, there are multiple options. We will not go through anything but full import because of the time. Um, the first thing what you could actually see here, uh, Gephi is clever enough to determine what directories are valid now for JGraph databases. This will be actually done by this special icon. Okay, um, now after the import, or after selecting the proper directory, you could actually define some filtering. We will not do filtering because um, I specially prepared the data we will be visualizing right now. Now, what you could actually <coughs> yeah, see here, it's super fast, right? We just load it. We just loaded 500 nodes. Um, but this is not very cool, right? Um, and, <laughs> and that's completely fine because we just loaded uh, the graph structure, and it doesn't have explicit information about the, about the positioning. So the first thing we will apply is actually layout. So that's um, this kind of window. Um, and what is very cool, there is uh, plenty of building layouts, but from the archi architecture point of view, this is really an extension point. So if there is any other layout you would like to have, or, and it's not there, it will be really great if you could kind of participate and uh, provide it for the others. Um, for this visualization, probably the best one is Force Atlas. So we'll just run it. Now, what you could actually see is how cool is Gephi and, okay, very small. So after applying a layout, we should have a little bit more understanding of what it should be. Um, does anybody have a clue what are the data structure here or um, what kind of data I'm visualizing? Um, because we will actually get to it at the end. Okay, um, I mean more specifically. <laughs> <laughs> The next feature, which is very cool, is called statistics, and you can see on the on the right side, of yours, right? That's here. Um, and the thing, and the reason why I'm showing you this, uh, because we will just use it for a little bit better visualization. Um, 
again, this is also an extension point you can develop your own. And for this purpose, we will just run the energy degree. This will tell us basically. Okay, this is not working well. Uh, this will tell us how many nodes uh, we see the value and the count have how many input or output in, um, ingoing or outgoing uh, edges. In terms of now for they are called relationships. And for that reason, maybe we could run it a little bit. Yeah. For that reason, we will apply a function uh, or feature in Gephi called ranking. Um, in this particular case, it really makes sense to differentiate between the nodes according to what we actually run, right? The statistics. Um, and we would like to say that you know the nodes which have the most uh, number of incoming and or outgoing edges are the most important this is really what will happen so we will first apply ranking yeah. um, and what we actually could see here is the fact that we will go from from 1 to 23 so the node which has most of it has 23 incoming and outgoing edges and we'll apply a size from 2 to 20. So the cool thing here is, yeah, we actually get much better understanding of the graph, right? We could see that this is probably one of the most important nodes. Again, this one is weird. Uh, this is probably the second most important node. But without applying maybe some fancy coloring, it's not that cool. And that's exactly what we're going to do right now. Uh, you could actually select well-defined color um, depth before. The cool thing about this is you could right now see not only the size of the nodes, but also the color. So the red ones are the most important, and uh, you know the blue, sorry, <laughs> uh, the white ones are probably the less important. Now, we have kind of better understanding what is going on, but we would like to see the data, right? Um, so we will um, turn on the feature called labels according to the nodes. You could actually customize it and we will start with something not very useful, but <coughs> according to node size. It will be an ID. Again, what you could see here is the fact that Gephi is clever and it could show you um, the labels according to an importance. So this is not very important right here. I just wanted to show you. And also, if you zoom enough, it will not show you any data which you can actually see. Now, does anybody have any clue what this could be as a data structure, especially what data could come from? Probably not. Um, uh, OK. <laughs> yep. And you know it because of the IDs, or? No, because I thought two, two, two yeah. notes, Saturday and Sunday, uh, I guess. Yeah. So it will be really a big surprise if we turn on the date and we actually see, yes, these two days. So we are here and this was the yesterday. Yeah, I wrote um, a very simple XML parser which actually extracts the data from XML and imports it into an alpha database. Almost all of it, but not all of it. Um, again, we could play a little bit, a little bit more. Uh, when we actually turn on the name, yeah, we could see um, all the cool stuff. I really love it. It's really good for you. Um, and if you would like to be a little bit more specific, we will turn on the. It's, I'm, not, I'm not really sure if, uh, why it's called slug, but it's called slug. Yeah. And we could be finding for. Yeah, search function. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a search, but there is a purpose why I'm doing this kind of crazy stuff. <laughs> um, there is a search. But I would like to show you this um, additional layout. Uh, because when you turn on the uh, labels, you are not forced to use just one of them. You could actually apply multiple of them. So we could be visualizing date plus name plus outer plus date plus index, whatever you want. And this, when it goes really important, layout called label adjust. It's here. 
um, and it will get you much better understanding. I'm really sorry, but this is very small resolution, so it's not that cool here. Um, we obviously are interested in data, right? This is more likely about the relationships, so how nodes have relationships to other nodes. Um, but we, if we would like to make some introspection, we need to see the data. And I'll be talking about data because we have a function called data laboratory. Um, we will just hide some stuff. What you could actually see here, these are all the data according to the nodes. Uh, obviously, Gephi has a tabular data structure, so it's like a table. In OSQL, there is no such thing as table. So, um, as part of the import process, I'm basically uh, making a transformation from graph into the table. Now, what you can see here, I will put probably. Um, there is an integration, of, of course, between the data laboratory and the overview. So you could go from one specific node to a data laboratory item and um, vice versa as well. So if we would like to see, let's say, um, some data from here, we'll just select in data laboratory. And after something, we, we could actually see all the data here, right? out of time but um, there's, uh, there are plenty of good features one specific in mind uh, obviously is how we could actually filter data now what I showed you was a uh, full import so it will uh, iterate through all the nodes everything put into memory uh, in, term of, in terms of get data structures and you could then apply filters um, this, this kind of filtering is done at runtime which means uh, there will really be in memory, but uh, you could actually customize what will be shown in the, as part of the graph. Uh, if you would like to have more fine grade imports, there is a feature called traversal import. Now, if anybody is familiar with Neo4j, uh, one of the parts with in, uh, where it really shines is basically uh, the traversal API. So it's very cool to actually do any kind of traversing and filtering. That's exactly uh, the UI wrapper for traversal API. Now, if you would like to apply a traversal import, uh, the data will be not important. Um, for this purpose, and go to data laboratory. Mm, I'm Java guy, so there should be something with yeah, free Java dev room. So if we would like to um, visualize, and that's not very visible. Uh, so as always, you can apply additional, uh, you know, ranking or partitioning or layout. Yeah, this is a little bit better. And let's say we would like to... Okay. Uh, we would like just to filter the data from uh, free Java data room because I'm interested, maybe not you, but I am. Um, what you can see here is actually a very nicely written um, UI filtering. So we could apply filtering according to attributes. Um, as part of the importing process, every uh, value and key pair is uh, transformed into a get free attribute. We'll apply an equal according to the track. Yeah, so just drag and drop here. Of course, you could um, create any kind of uh, crazy expressions using and, and or, XOR, and whatever. And in that case, we will apply. Um, okay, sorry, it will be a free Java room. Yeah, and if I put it correctly, yeah, that's exactly it. Um, <coughs> we just see data again. We will apply level adjust because it's just crazy. And these are for one uh, date. These are from the other date. So you could do a runtime filtering with this kind of feature. Okay. Um, last but not least, there is um, there are many features I would like to show you, but we don't have enough time. So maybe if anybody has any kind of question, yeah, we could go. Oh, we have five minutes. So yeah, we you could ask. 
<laughs> um, this visualization is actually using OpenGL behind the scenes, the Java wrapper, so it's very efficient. Um, it was used for visualizing uh, really big graphs in terms of 10 of gigabytes of RAM. So that's really cool. Um, maybe if you would like to participate in the project, um, the project will definitely join the Google Summer of Code. That's how I started with it. Um, the overall architecture is modular, which is very cool because you could actually look into anything, create your own, customize it. So not only you can uh, create your own partitioning, your own kind of ranking, your uh, own layout. I actually do and one layout, uh, not really functional, but yeah, I did it. Um, you could apply statistics and um, there are some direction. Uh, we are probably do some refactoring because this is supporting Neo4j specifically. Um, and there are some very specific Neo4j uh, features we are supporting. Um, there is also a feature called debug, but I don't have a testing data for it. Um, using this feature, you can actually see in what order all the nodes were added. Uh, in some particular cases, it's really the purpose uh, in what order they are added, especially when you uh, basically start working with a traversal import. You can define that first and all these kind of algorithms. <coughs> okay. Now is the time for a question. If there are. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, is there any questions? Okay. Well, this tool, we learned more about to a tool that I have used for performance analysis called Parabet. I, I guess that no one in this room knows what it is. What are this? Parabet. Two Two things. It's a it's different commands. You can do filtering, you can do coloring, you can compute functions. And it allows you to see the performance of other features. We have seen that you can perform many of these things in this tool. Uh, there is one question. You can say configuration of views, filters, ranking, and all of these in files. Combine them, load it later. Yeah, just to repeat easily something that you have done before. Uh, you mean uh, from the UI perspective or from the programming point of view? Uh, from the user perspective. User perspective. Um, I'm not sure if this is uh, right now in the trunk. Uh, but everything is basically mapped into the UI, it's, uh, sorry, into the API. There is an API for anything, for, um, there is a ranking API, you know, all the layouts. So you definitely you can do it programmatically. But I don't really see the purpose of why you should just like, you know, the same stuff again and again and again. So, um, so, you have a map, you have a you have a Yeah, we could add it as a as a feature if you get me, but I really believe that's not the right.